Hey everyone, welcome to another episode of Pony411. This is episode 258 for the week of April 28th, 2019. I am Nemesis and I am joined by Alcatraz. Hey. Yeah. Uh, big weekend this weekend. Uh, yeah. <laughs> Avengers Endgame came out. Uh, I saw it. I have yeah. not. So no spoilers. No I, spoilers. I will not I would not do that, but it is amazing, so you should all watch it if you haven't already. Yeah, and if already, you haven't already, you should probably go see it again. There are already jerks running around spoiling things for people. Mm-hmm. Yeah, but... It is amazing. I will say that much. Uh, Go see it if you haven't yet. It's worth watching. It's worth sitting for three hours. Three hour movie. Oh boy, (laughs) it's 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 great though. Make sure to drink the biggest drink you can right before going. Yeah, that's the best best idea. Uh, Yeah, I'm gonna. I'm probably gonna try to see it again just because I well liked it a lot and I want to see some more stuff that I probably missed the first time around. Anyway, I'm not here to talk about uh, those characters that group <laughs> we're here to talk about a different group of characters who are the more equine variety we have a bunch of news from that world uh we have the of course the new episode to talk about and a bit of music at the end as well to uh go through yep so go ahead and start with uh news if you want to follow along go to pony 411libsoncom slash show notes it's again spelled l-i-b-s-y-n you can go there and check out more stuff about the news because we're only going to go look summarize over for the most part so let's go ahead with conventions sea pony con is returning november 30th through december 1st you know southeast asia pony convention that is what they are in the philippines that's what it was that's no country i couldn't remember which one yep <laughs> there you go check that out if you are interested at all brony con is an open art show applications and charity submissions so if you want to draw some work or you know have someone buy stuff make charity money yeah. <laughs> yeah that was a good sentence it was a good sentence that was, was a, a good sentence. sentence good job it's the best sentence <laughs> <sighs> and finally TrotCon has announced Bill Newton TrotCons yep. and fandom news and whatnot sort of well not sort really of. fandom other news I guess this is show news but like in a tangential yeah, way. But MLP has had a huge impact on the animation industry in Vancouver. There's a little article about that from uh, the Vancouver Courier uh, yeah. that talks about just how much of an impact it has, like, just in general. Yeah, didn't, like, DHX Studio start off rather small and just exploded mm-hmm. because They said of they this? started off with a... I'm trying to remember how many the number was. 250 employees, and now there's 690. Yeah, over doubled the employee workforce. Mm-hmm. So yeah, check that other article if you want to, you know, see the people talk, see the stuff about the people who made the show. Yep. Uh, merchandise news over in Japan, Daiso and Claire's Japan have released some MLP stuff, including what was it? It was uh, water bottles and these little squishy keychain things. Swishy keychain things. Mm. Uh, yeah, those. Some things. of them have, you know, you squish them, they also have smells. You know. Yep. They smells. There you go. If you're ever going to Japan, you want MLP stuff there for some reason. There you go. <laughs> well, why wouldn't you want stuff? In comic news, Friendship is Magic number 77 has a preview on iTunes. That is continuing the uh, Cosmos arc. And in Equestria Girls news, uh, synopses for several of the upcoming shorts have popped up. Apparently, they're going to start in very short order. One of them is, let's see, well, actually, apparently, <laughs> they're, looks like they're actually going to be starting to air like two at once for a while. Uh, one of them. I'm on a yacht music video. Yeah, is T Pain there? They did it. They went there. They finally did it. Yeah, they're apparently performing the I'm on a yacht music video. They are parodying that song, that which in of itself is a parody of a certain of kind of genre song. Yeah, <laughs> that can definitely be interesting. And another one, a run to break free. That's a music video about well, pretty much Dash and her song about running, and feeling free. Run. To break free. I want to break free. How about to say, is that I want I'm to break free? I'm certain that is. Uh, camping must-haves. Applejack and Rarity have varying ideas about camping gear. So Feels like we've done this before. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Sleepless in Ponyville. Yeah. Except the main With, except. thrust of it instead of yeah. background. Festival filters. Sunset Shimmer is about to post a photo so the girls show their own awesome filters. Oh, boy. Oh, boy. Rarity's going to duck face. I just know it. Yep. How to Backstage, uh, Sunset Shimmer gets his festival backstage pass with faces of a few bumps in the road. 
and festival looks. The main seven show stylish outfits, but Sci-Twi goes for function over fashion. Horrifying rarity. <laughs> Sounds like a fun time there. Yes. The only thing, of course, is these still going to be like the two or three minute long shorts. So probably just little teeny tiny little ones. Like yeah. We've so been we'll talk about those when they come up and uh, probably for like a few minutes each. Yep. And they're probably just going to be like the, what we've done before. Yep. Pretty much. Group them into one big shot. No. And, well, <laughs> because these are all coming out. Yeah. Because they're separate. We're just gonna, hey, look, this is the next short that came out. And we're going to go on to the main episode now. Here we go. Unless they all just like dump them in all it. at once on like the said, app. <laughs> yeah. But they're supposed to come out over the next month or so. Yeah. And Friendship is Magic News. Uh, season 9 is now on Google Play, if you want to get it there instead of iTunes, because of whatever reason. Even though I believe they only go 720p because of Reasons. some reason. I don't know. Whatever. So it's there. And finally, uh, synopses for episodes 10, 11, 12, and 13 have been revealed. And in order... Going to seed, Applejack's plans for an orderly harvest go awry when Apple Bloom becomes obsessed with catching a magical creature she thinks can help them. Fun. She's playing Pokemon Go. <laughs> <laughs> uh. Student Council. Starlight Glimmer rel- relishes a role as student counselor and encourages the students to come to her any time about anything, but she becomes overwhelmed and learns the lesson. I bet she doesn't. <laughs> Seriously, you haven't even saw the episode. We're all already... <laughs> Well, it's Digging at it. Uh, Tell, uh, kind of, I'm surprised the question daily is still on this weird thing of she's head of the school now. It's like, no, she's not. Did you not pay attention? <laughs> she's still just the counselor. Come on, Seth, pay attention. Uh, the Last Crusade. Unexpected visitors to Ponyville threaten to break up the Cutie Mark Crusaders forever. Oh, no. Wow. What's That's... that about? I don't know, the last crusade. (laughs) 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 And finally, between dark and dawn, Luna and Celestia take a sister vacation while Twilight and her friends struggle to cover the princess's many royal duties. Huh. Hey, look, it's an episode that's going to cover what would have happened if Celestia and Luna did actually retire. Yeah, I'm a bit curious about this one. Is this one going to focus on Luna and Celestia taking a vacation with interludes and Twilight half and half. Yeah, because it's like... Are we going to focus on the sisters, or are we going to focus on the main six? Yes. <laughs> yeah. It's going to be half and half. It's going to be half probably. and half. Mm. Might lean more on to Twilight freaking out. Yeah. But yeah, it's going to see that case. It's a good thing you didn't just dump it on them and run off. <laughs> guess what? There's more to, the, to running a government than just saving it when it goes bad. Yep. Got to make sure, you know, keep all the wheels turning. The wheels of bureaucracy must keep turning. <laughs> Cog in the machine of capitalism. <laughs> yep. Uh, and that's the end of the news. Oil the cogs of capitalism with the blood of the poor. <laughs> yeah, that's how it goes. Yep, basically. Anyway, uh, moving on from that somewhat morbid <laughs> topic. <laughs> well, we got uh, the episode, the new one that just came out, and it's The Point of No Return. Okay, so as a quick synopsis, Twilight gets a box of stuff from Celestia that she left behind in Canterlot. She finds it on a un- return library book and then it, and she panics, so she goes to the Canterlot library. And then she has to go try to, you know, pay the late fee, and she's out to lunch, so she goes follows her, and then she finds out the head librarian that was there when she was back in Canterlot may have been fired over this, so she panics over that, goes and finds her, uh, meets her. Turns out she actually just quit because, hey, I... F- got liberated because I don't have to be perfectionist anymore and then Twilight has to be stopped being so perfectionist and she returns to the library book or whatever, pays the fine and that's it. Yep. Very condensed, but condensed. that's the purpose of a synopsis or a summary or whatever. Anyway, uh, I really like this episode <laughs> a lot. Of course um, you did. Yeah. It was a Twilight <laughs> it's a, episode. It's a good Twilight episode. Uh, there's been a couple of Twilight episodes which haven't been so great. Yeah. There's a couple of them which isn't disappointing, but hey. Uh, but this one was really fun uh, uh, for this, just because I think part of it was, it was, we had Twilight kind of getting panicky, but not to the same degree she has in the, some of the recent episodes and whatnot. It's not like it was in, um, which one, uh, the, well, the, 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 the premiere, a lot of the ones, premiere yeah. recently, like she got really panicky, bad, it was got really bad in the beginning there. Yeah. And I've been kind of starting to complain about it, but this one is... In the sense that it, it says there's a panic, but it's controlled. There's a still degree of um, 
she has a degree of, control, degree of control and she actually is proactively doing something rather than just sitting there breathing to a paper bag or whatever. And it's refreshing because of the whole thing of like way back when it kind of seemed like they caught her, got her over her panicky stuff. And then they undid it because, oh, it's funny to watch her panic. And now it's, um, now it seems this is more return to form, which is she kind of panics, but at the same time, she's actually functional still. Yeah. yeah I was actually going to, gonna start off with the same thing because i noticed that it's like it's a reasonable panic it's not just i honestly thought i wasn't gonna start with that <laughs> <laughs> i i knew that was gonna come up and it was something that i was noticing when watching this as well yeah. so this was it, also if you didn't mention it first i would have this this was ri- episode was written by gm barrow and it's her last episode oh yeah for the show she did was, a really good job on yeah, this, this one. was a really good one um I, just, I feel like this is one that she gets Twilight as a character, honestly, better than I think like Kaber does. <laughs> <laughs> but yeah, it's it's because of that. It's you know it's a lot more entertaining because you know the panic doesn't overstay its welcome. It doesn't go to an extreme. It doesn't add more stuff, ridiculous stuff for her to panic over. It's and it's a somewhat reasonable thing to kind of get a little worried over. And which is I have a way way overdue library book and. The the panic over just an overdue book or just being overdue over self may have been a little bit more than every day. Yeah. The the, the average person wouldn't panic as much as she did over that, but it's reasonable for her to panic really to that level because it's Twilight and because of, yeah. And that was kind of the whole joke in the beginning was it's not that big of a it's just an overdue library book. It's really not that big of a deal. But then the realization of fine. <laughs> the fine is a big one. Though That's she... something to justify pan- pan- panic over. Of how yeah. many? How big is the fine now that it's like five or six years overdue, if yeah. not more? I think they have an upper cap on Well, yeah, the they fine, even said but... that in the in the show, but she didn't know. Most people don't yeah. realize that. They kind of freak out because, oh, God. Yeah. Oh, God. Because other places do not have caps on nope, the fine. The late fee just continues to increase. And that's when you have to just bail out and change your name and move away. <laughs> <laughs> yep, fake your own death. It's the only way out. Yeah, yeah. It it was fun. But it was partially because this was a this was Twilight centric to an extreme in the sense that not none of the other main six appeared at all. Yeah. They weren't even mentioned. Not Just, even they mentioned. weren't there. It was a Twilight episode through and through with yep. Spike, but with Spike in a sidekick role as he should be. Spike was was well done in this one. I like I liked his snark. <laughs> he is where he should be. Although there was sometimes it was like Spike. Come on. If it's the macaroni frame. Come on, Spike. She was like four when she made that. Yeah, it's a macaroni. It's You're like... snarking something a four-year-old made. Does that make you feel good? <laughs> yeah, it was a little bit much, but the rest of it. It's like, I have a perfect record. You had a perfect record. <laughs> Just kind of rub it in a little bit. <laughs> Just, next thing you should have been pff, into the water, he goes. Uh, it, was, it was definitely a fun episode. It, yeah. it was really well written. I really enjoyed it. Yeah, it was also the um just a lot of fun. Like it's like it's weird because like you see Twilight panicking, but then we can just kind of we kind of see what kind of environment she grew up in that makes her so panicky. Because what do they call the department for late? <laughs> it's like the, the uh, extra late books for ponies who really should know better. It's yeah, like she's no really, wonder Twilight is such well, a panicky. Even, Everything in her life was conspiring, conspiring to make her a neurotic mess. Except she didn't even know. Well, that no, that was the name. but <laughs> that's the kind of society that makes something like that acceptable. <laughs> You can, cannot imagine. Uh, Canterlot may be a horror show yeah. for someone who's, who's already kind of uh, has some neuroses. Jeez, no wonder. <laughs> I've never seen a late book this late in I'm ever. Guessing, I'm guessing unicorn culture is like Catholic culture. It's just oh, nothing geez. but shame. <laughs> oh, jeez. You're bringing the Catholics into this. Cath- you know, Catholic guilt is a thing. Yep, it is. They shame you into doing stuff. That's what it feels like. It's like Canterlot is designed to shame you into doing things. Yeah, and yeah. No I, wonder. I, I know about the guilt. It's... So now, now it's only Twilight's neurotic um, tendencies regarding to panic suddenly makes sense. Canterlot breeds you to do this. If you do not conform with what is expected of you, prepare for consequences. That's how the nobles keep the peasants down. <laughs> in their place. They <laughs> keep them in their place. Groveling at their hooves. <laughs> yep. Ah, class structures. Although that reminds me also of the funny thing. One of the funniest things was just um, Spike. When you get into the restaurant, someone mistakes him for a waiter. <laughs> and he, he at first um, Hey, I'm not a waiter. Oh, but then... <laughs> So he just kind of naturally goes into the role. It's like, just 
naturally moves into it. Spike. <laughs> Spike. It's not great. It's a little... There might be some issues here we need to dive into. <laughs> He's also really good at it. Yeah. I don't know. Maybe he just... I don't know. Some people just have a knack for it. Spike is always designed to be support, not main. And we've yep. said that I've said that so many times. Spike as the main character doesn't all very work very well. He's he's a great support character. Yeah. It's really where he, where he works best at. Mm-hmm. But also in the mirror, I saw we saw Moon Dancer. Yes, finally Moon Dancer returns and speaks. Yes. Although she still has her not great hairstyle. <laughs> just take all the hair and just up ahead. It's like no, just yep. Do something. Do, do the ponytail know? that comes out the top of her head. It's like, it's, it's, mm. all right, I guess. Okay. Sure. <laughs> Whatever works for you, I guess. Whatever. Okay. I guess. I think it works. Speaking of Moon Dancer and that whole thing, uh, <laughs> one thing I noticed, we went, it's the Tasty Treat. It is the yeah, name of the, the restaurant. The... We went to the Tasty Treat, but we didn't see the characters. They yeah. didn't show up. They're in the kitchen working. So, what is it? Uh, what, Saffron? Yeah, Saffron and... And, and like whatever her dad her dad is. Yeah, they're, they're working in the kitchen, so they can't show up. Yeah, but not even a cameo. No. Nope. It's like, oh Nope. I have to have Moon Dancer instead. Yeah. Woo! Yeah. But yeah, the, um, the, the pony there that uh, Moon Dancer is hanging out with Slash is in charge of the late fee stuff is a first folio. First folio. It was voiced by Tabitha. Tabitha did it. Yeah. <laughs> Just give Tabitha all the rolls. Well, she got muffins as well as usual. Yeah, because yeah, muffins appeared. Yep, the derpy started up right in the beginning, which a lot of people a big are. Box. Yep, and then she was gone. Yep, and that's the fandoms using that one. Right. Yeah, there's also uh, Dusty Pages, the 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 ex head librarian, Ellen Kennedy, played her and. Uh, yeah, of course, Kazumi Evans reprising her role as Moon Dancer. Apple Rose. Oh, yeah, that was Apple Rose uh, in the old folks' home. Yep. Shirley Milner. Oh, and Paul Dobson as the, I guess, the, the really angry guy at the house. <laughs> oh, yeah. With all the signs. He's all of... Meathead Pony. <laughs> meathead. Yep. <laughs> meathead. Yeah. No solicitors. <laughs> no free literature. <laughs> Just, just, just you guys probably saying, I'm a princess. None of your signs matter, you know. <laughs> your time is mine now. <laughs> I am a princess. I have royal authority. I will invoke eminent domain and I will take your house. <laughs> uh, I will take your house and turn it into a hamster sanctuary just because I can. Yeah, but she had she had the the saddlebags on. You couldn't see the wings very yeah, easily. No. Still, it's it's weird thing. It's like, well, it's still Princess Twilight. They can't even kind of touch on it, which is one of the weird things the show kind of still grapples with. Which is Twilight is a celebrity. She is, and she her she you know people ponies should go. Oh, it's Princess Twilight, and it's still kind of that weird thing where like you get him who's like, yeah. Well, there's always going to be those people who just don't care. Yeah, I don't care, don't recognize them for some reason or another, but it's still kind of weird that it did kind of pop up in this episode. It's, a few it's always times been that weird the... thing that the show's always kind of struggled with that of like showing like it's like somehow they treat like the main six as nobodies, you know, it's like they should be pretty famous by now. Yeah. For various reasons. But this one actually kind of brings it up and you got also got the funny thing of just uh I'm not here for any books. <laughs> no new books for me today. <gasps> <gasps> Everyone just what? Because she's what? got she's got her picture on the wall because of the best book return or whatever. Yep, best book borrower. Yeah, best book borrower and big old smile and everything. And got a goofy smile on her library <laughs> card and just, just the dimples. Yeah, just you look at the picture, the dimples, the huge dimples she has. Mm-hmm. Yeah, it, yeah, it was it was a lot of fun things. It was also funny that just that you know because the guy was getting. Dusty Page's old male, and he's and he, all he knows is silver something. Silver something. Must, so Twilight's trying to find all these silver places, including Silver Stream. Silver Stream. <laughs> it's like, do you know Dusty Pages? No, no. <laughs> okay, okay. 
Yeah, but it was um, yeah, wind up in an old folks' home, which is just funny. Why I just it's a horrible. <laughs> this is horrible. There's not a book anywhere. Yeah. Not a book in sight. Oh yeah, that whole scene. Oh, she. It looks like she's having a lot of fun. No, it's it's horrible. <laughs> smells like butterscotch and denture cream. <laughs> <laughs> My mom used to work for an assistant living place. Oh boy! Yep, the smells you can smell. Yep, there's there, there's a unique aroma. Yeah, <laughs> it's like going to a hospital. Why does everything smell like alcohol? Because and not the good kind. Because <laughs> everything's scrubbed constantly. Yep, but yeah, yeah, I like the the whole. She looks like she's really busy and having a lot of fun here. No, <laughs> she's, she's just, just hiding herself. from the existential dread. Well, that's what I said. Yeah, that's what you said. <laughs> In the shows, she's distracting herself from the pain. From the pain of losing her job. For the best job in the world. Yeah. Because yeah. for Twilight, it's like, uh, being a librarian is big. How, how would you not want to? That's the best thing ever. <laughs> also, also nice as the, the mentioning of, I used to live in a library. Yep. The tree. Yeah, rip. The tree. The tree. Oh, well. It's it gone. burned. Yep. And also, they also re- you use the scene from uh, the first episode. Yes, the very first episode, they they did a flashback mm, I'm... The, about the book because oh, this is her borrowing a book, and then Spike, Spike. Yep. What happened? Why did you forget the book? Because she just pushed it off the side, looking for that one very important book about the elements of harmony and stuff. Because that moon's coming, and then things happened. Yeah, kind of a lot of stuff happened. So I'm not surprised she forgot the book existed. She kind of got hurriedly moved to Ponyville. Yes. By royal decree. Mm-hmm. You don't argue with royal decree. <laughs> like we were saying, they'll take your house. <laughs> and they'll turn into a hamster sanctuary. Womp, womp. Yes. I'm, I, I kind of want to compare. It, see if they reused the asset, the, the animation, or if they actually reanimated it. They may have reanimated it with you know better I don't know. I remember stuff. Spike's arms looked weird. Which kind of like some some of the movement look like Spike did was weird looking, which like it looked like older, rougher animation. Yeah, so, so they spike. may have reused the animation because the scene, pl- the like the scenes look the same, identical to the yeah. first. So it's not like yeah, it fr- they just really did just uh, re- because it was all this. If if anything, it would be cheaper for them just to <laughs> insert the old thing and then just add that little extra bit of the book sliding underneath the shelf. Yep, it's like the the scene from the library that that's a reused asset as well. Yeah. Because they, they've been there before. And it's like, well, yeah, of course they're going to reuse it. <laughs> you have the assets. Use them. Yep. <laughs> also, <laughs> Sometimes you do update them. It's like um, Zakora's Cottage has been updated. And same with... Uh, yeah. Well, all those other places have been re Fluttershy's house was... Fluttershy's house. Um, Dash's house has been updated multiple times as yeah. well. I mean, you can go back and compare season one stuff to... To what we see him now, it's like holy mm-hmm. crap, those are so much nicer now. Oh, yeah, that was the other thing. It was that one librarian, it's like it's in the basement because of the shame. Yep. Again, I'm telling you, Candlelight Culture is it's part, largely responsible why Twilight's kind of a neurotic mess sometimes. Probably Ponyville is really good for her, yeah, and more than just getting friends, <laughs> got her away from that nonsense. It's funny because it's like this is stuff they're not thinking about as writers. They're not thinking about this story. Like, of course, we're just filling these holes because look, I found a hole that can easily be explained away, you know, by this thing. By this thing. This explains this. Even if they did not intend it at all, it works really well. It works. You can totally use that. <laughs> it works, and you don't have to break anything in the process. Hooray! One thing I was kind of I was wondering when they first started talking about. Dusty Page is losing their jobs. Like forced, heard they was forced to leave because one person didn't return a book. It's like, really? wow, that's like really harsh. Your job depends on someone else's actions, which unfortunately oh. does happen. But holy crap! Turns out that was not actually the case. Yeah. That Dusty left on her own accord because. But it's I'm free. But then brings the question: Why do people think she was forced to leave? Where did that rumor start? How did that happen? Again. Can't a lot built on shame. The <laughs> shame of not doing your job properly. You you know you're pressured into leaving because we have that. You're not officially fired, but you're pressured super hard into leaving, so they don't actually have to fire you. Yeah, they'll, because yeah, 
encourage you to resign for whatever reason the pr is better for them to just have you resign versus them firing you even though firing would be i think part of his firing oh firing would mean a severance package possibly yeah that's what part of it too they put on to push you to resign so they don't have to pay that it's now yep. a voluntary thing therefore the severance package is not necessary yep there's also the there's also benefits for the person getting fired mm-hmm. or not fired when you're dealing with like unemployment at least the way it is around here if you get fired your chances of un- getting unemployment if they can prove that you got fired for a legit reason you won't get unemployment yeah so yep. that's another uh, reason that you don't want to be fired so you can pick up unemployment main tray, um, it's just kind of weird that just she left just uh, to me, that's that's kind of what, what I think is one of the weak aspects is that this whole idea, this perfectionism. Okay, it's like it's fixed because of one mistake, and it's like something I don't have to feel like I'm being perfectionist anymore. It's like that doesn't really what happens. You know what happens? You spiral. You spiral <laughs> when you something goes bad. When you're perfectionist, you just sit there spiraling because you think you are the worst thing in the world. And you're totally useless, and you can't do anything right. So why not? Even, why even bother? And you just kind of sit there. And spiral and spiral and spiral until you finally kind of either snap out of it because you reason it or someone else gets you or whatever. But yeah, you don't just go, oh, I'm free. Who knows? That may have been what happened. There was a long time period between yeah. when she would have been, quote, fired <laughs> she and when they found She abridged it when she was telling Twilight. <laughs> Probably not to make her freak out <laughs> even worse. That spiraled really bad because for a couple Twilight years. Was al- <laughs> Twilight was already freaking out about what, you know, and blaming herself for this horrible thing that Twilight happened. Twilight spiraling. <laughs> you don't want to explain, yeah, what you did really screwed me up for a while. <laughs> you don't want to add that guilt yeah, to it. Yeah, so I was it already spiraling. Sense. Yeah. But by the but way, this is probably a little bit from personal part. experience. This isn't. It's not fun when you're perfectionist. Just to say that. I said before, you don't just sit there iterating until you're perfect. You just sit there. You do it once, screw it up, and then you never do it again because you hate yourself. Yep. This is, what's the point? Yeah. So it's uh, not fun. That mindset to be in sometimes. <laughs> yep. Maybe you need to read that book. Too bad it doesn't exist. Yeah. Too bad just reading a book helps. Doesn't help. Like yeah. Why don't you just try being happy? Just get over it. Yeah. You should smile more. Mental mental issues are not fixed with just nice little, little phrases and whatnot. Yeah, no. It never works uh, that Oh, way. that's... Uh, what was the phrase of her? It's her, um, toxic positivity. Oh, yeah, that's that, one. That's, that's what they call it. It's like you, you, you try and use these nice phrases and be nice, but it really doesn't help, and it actually makes things worse. Because now, now there's guilt. <laughs> yep. Although sometimes little things do help, but yeah, it's never things. just one little thing that fixes everything. Yeah. Like going and standing out in the sun actually helps. Yeah. In cer- Leaving your room case. really does help. Yeah. Well, vitamin D deficiency is a thing yeah. that can cause de- depression like symptoms. So if you're already prone to it, it can really, you know, not getting vitamin D can make things worse. And you can enough, make things a little better at least. Sometimes weirdly enough. Just like taking a shower works, just because like just it's changing weird... it, it's and those little things don't ever fix it completely. No, but it does at least but make it can... so you stop, kind of stops the spiraling aspect a little yes, bit. Yes, and they can alleviate, like, they can take the edge off of things and maybe give you that little bit to take the next step. Yep. to help and yeah, so it's those little little things never fixed it. At least help, help like at least little. kind of might might be able to halt halt the spiral at the very least. So at least you stop. You're not going getting better, but you're not getting worse. Yeah, <laughs> I mean, we're way, way way off topic yeah. now, but <laughs> 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 things happen, you know. Yeah, well, it was it was tangential. It's the whole perfection. Yeah, it's, it's part of the whole whole moral of the story. Yeah, if... a couple little funny things. Yeah, the nose. <laughs> Oh, the nose and the actor. The actor with the nose. Yeah, and I, Twilight's eye twitching. Like, Just, yeah, I, yeah, I get you, Twilight. What? What is this? That is um some uh, <laughs> unique facial structure there. Uh, uh, that was oh, great. My, one of my favorite things was, of course, the G1 Star Scroll figure. Yep, that was the next thing I was going like, to mention. As a toy collector... Yeah, <laughs> the G- my G one star scroll figure. Yep, and of course, yep. The little joke about the toys and all that stuff. Cause yep, G one yep. ponies. G one ponies. This is G four. Yep, that was great. Little bit of meta. Mm-hmm. It's it. It's perfect. Twilight's a little uh, her papers. Oh, and this extra extra credit paper on the what was it? 
Ah, oh, sorry with an I. It was about magic and basically the, using uh, magic in day to day chores. Yeah, and how it's doesn't doesn't work very well. Yeah, apparently, for some reason. Ha! Huh, still true. Well, one of the other things uh, I think the only other thing I have actually written down on my list, a thing that I noticed, they talk it how it's been a while that the book how the book has been due to be returned for a long time mm-hmm. but they never actually put a no, number no on it no specific numbers just sometimes they'll say many moons and i think at one point they said years but they never use an actual number very careful not yeah, to they ground do themselves that. They, they they realized um i guess they really just don't want to have an actual hard timeline yeah, because they know it's just going to make things worse. They know it's worse. Point, it's kind of got muddy, super muddy at this point because of various reasons. They're like, eh, it's just kind of this amb- it, it's a- <laughs> ambiguous timeline. That this time has definitely passed, but we're not going to say how much. Just It's clearly been a few years, but uh, shut up. <laughs> yeah, well, it's one of those, at this point, it would probably be a bad idea for them to throw a number because whatever number that they throw out is going to be wrong con- Someone's going to yell at them because it's wrong. wrong. It doesn't matter what the Zelda timeline. (laughs) Yes. Then you're going to get some weird rando person doing this panel at a convention on how the timeline's wrong. I never said it was wrong. I just said I just said I'm trying to make it work with based on what I got. (laughs) Had a pretty good conclusion until they kind of went and threw that out the window again. But yep. I was like, they gotta be in their senior year of high school in the question goes world. No, they're not. They just went on summer break. I don't know, maybe high school goes for five years. They're all super seniors. Oh jeez. Oh no. Oh, Some places no. high school is only three years. Yeah, like in Japan. Cause they have junior high? You go middle school, then like a junior high, and then high school. In <laughs> Japan, middle school is three years as well. Yeah. I know that. So you have this, because here in the U.S. you have your middle school and then high school. Mm-hmm. Elementary school, middle school, high school. But some have this middle point between middle school and high school. They have another one in there. Yeah, that, that I don't think Japan does that. Up. Middle Japan is still elementary, middle, high. But theirs is just always, theirs is all very much locked in step versus how, out here in the U.S. It can be a little nebulous. Yeah. Like our our school system was, it was six, seven, and eight in one school. And then they moved the sixth graders to the elementary school in seven and eight. And then, yeah, but now it's, I think they actually moved it back to six, seven, and eight again back in the middle school. I'm not sure though. Yeah. I thought that's it. That was a weird one. The sixth, where the sixth grade lands. But yeah, seventh and eighth were middle school. And then the freshman ni- was ninth. Yeah. yeah. There was a couple of weird, uh, just highlight hiding in the bushes, of the, the, just pulling the wallet out with her car and like, <laughs> You don't ask. It's the same place. Where'd you get the bits? I mean, Where they you keep could their say wallets? it was in her saddlebag, but at that point, for some reason, also her saddlebag was missing when they were doing that bit. Yes. Her, we kept seeing her wings pop up and well, the saddlebags aren't there. <laughs> but then they were there again when she jumped out. Yep. So you could say, yeah, the wallet was in her saddlebag, but then what's the purpose of the wallet? <laughs> well, it's like keeping a wallet in your purse. Especially since what's the point of a wallet if you know wallets hold money, but the money's all coins. Mm. Well, they have. Well, obviously, they have identification cards. Yeah, I don't know. You think a saddlebag would just be designed so they have the pockets in there, but whatever. Yeah, I don't know. Well. Anyway, I just, I just find that idea funny. <laughs> the Sam Max. Yeah. Where do you keep that wallet, Twilight? It's none of your damn business. <laughs> now we're swearing. Oh no! Oh no! I said the worst one too. The worst one. Heck! Oh heck! <laughs> <laughs> but yeah You're um unfit. no i'm not gonna do that <laughs> nope 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 we don't go that far next next thing you know we we'll talk about hand holding or something oh no <laughs> premarital interdigitation <laughs> <laughs> but well, there was something in particular i was trying to think of a uh, crap hmm. oh i did like i did like a little bit where i actually do super distracted by a new book when she saw the yep oh you like, have this one Ooh, new book <laughs> and that I, was one I of that time feel. travel i know that feeling like talk about something oh hey new, new thing yep. there's a new thing here Ooh, that was that was shit. thing on on time travel uh, hmm, yep. yep all about time i've already seen a comic saying like why is there a forward from starlight in here just like well she did have that bit of time travel so did twilight <laughs> yeah. mm. 
they both have some experience in time travel, so it would make sense that they would have some sort of One input of them on it. Destroyed everything. It would make a good <laughs> entry. This is why you don't do it. Do not. Oh, the weird paintball with fruit thing. Except, yeah, I was like, "What? They're uh, throwing fruit at each other. Throwing fruit, and they got hit the book. Oh no! Hit the book. It's like, yeah, I'm like, yeah, it's like the book's about perfection, and yeah, the impossibility or whatever. The the impossible pursuit, impossible pursuit of yeah, and it's like, yeah, the, the old joke was why I never actually read it because well, she checked the book out, and then the whole Nightmare Moon thing happened, so you can understand why she never read it. She had a perfectly re- good reason, perfectly reasonable excuse, and then it's also just. It's like, can we keep the book? But it's going to sm- reek of fruit. Oh, I'm certain uh, it has something to fix that. It's can't just... get the stain out, but you can probably get the stuff that makes it smell. hope so, because otherwise it's going to get pretty gross. I'm pretty sure Twilight, of all people, has methods of cleaning books. I don't know. She seemed freaky freaked out when uh, the fruit hit his... Oh, no! Well, she was worried about it being perfect. Yeah. That was the whole thing. I know. She was more worried about the stain perfect. than anything. I don't know. That stain was still there. Yes. Like you said, you can't get the stain out, but you can get the smell out. I hope. I've Sometimes you think you got it, and then it comes back. Or it gets worse because, well, you've got the <laughs> smell let go away, but now the bacteria have come in. Now the smell's even worse. Like I said, I'm pretty sure she can figure something out. Toss it. Get a new one that's not stained. I already said. They, they said it, the stain's what makes it perfect. Mm-hmm. You're missing the yeah, point. I know, I, I know, but I'm just saying that down the line, it doesn't matter that there's a lesson there because it's going to smell bad. <laughs> like I've tried to keep stuff that stuff that got spilled on. Eventually, you got to toss it because all you can smell is sour milk. Yes, but they have magic or <laughs> whatever. <laughs> they yes, have magic. You don't magic have to explain is the anything. All. <laughs> it is. It's the fix all. Except clearly it doesn't, because we've seen multiple times it doesn't really fix much of anything sometimes. In fact, or sometimes it fixes everything. That's why they even wrote a paper about <laughs> how magic doesn't always work. But that's only in your day-to-day chores. Cleaning books out of stuff is not a day-to-day chore. That's not... Not a book, but cleaning is often a day-to-day chore. Yes, cleaning is, but repairing books? No, that's a specialty project. That's a specialty. So magic is perfectly usable there. But then it would be ruining the whole it's perfect thing. Which is why she's not going to, she's going to leave this thing. You could probably just, you know, seal the pages. <laughs> seal them with magic. Yes. <laughs> why not? <laughs> it's magic. Oh, the other thing, speaking of magic, I remember that the, um, she was holding, had the picture of dusty pages. She held it above the water <laughs> even when she fell in. Yep. Gotta and then save somehow it. got wet again. And then a wave came in. Yeah, but still just funny. She kept it above the water. Safe. Save the save the page. Yeah, those old people are doing a lot of activities. They're really spry for old people. Yeah. Again, which is keep them the distracted. Common, the common trope is to have old people that are really active. Yep. That grandma can kick your butt. Yep. I think we're pretty much <laughs> yeah yeah we're we're to our rambling end. phase. So <laughs> I think we're at the tail end of this episode. I'm just saying, I really enjoyed it, it a it lot. Was, it was after it, I think after uprooted and whatnot and well. I did like last week's episode, but this one I think just I think this is definitely like better. up there. This it, is a really good one. This it's is going to be, be a contender for the top. Of yeah, the it's going to be one of the best of the season, I think, uh, possibly. And unless there again, there's mind blowing ones later down the line, which yeah. hopefully there are. <laughs> I want I want more really good stuff like this. This was this is yeah, great. No, not like uprooted, <laughs> less like uprooted, more like this. <laughs> yes, we know every episode is intended to sell toys, but let's make it less obvious, please. Anyway, um, that's it for the episode. Yep. So uh, we'll go ahead and move on to fan content. And again, if you want the links to the fan content, go to pony411.libsyn.com slash show notes. Again, spell L-A-B-S-Y-N. So let's go ahead with music. Music. So yes, this is an interesting week for music because the Ponies at Dawn Skyfall album just released on Saturday. It's got 70 songs in it. Pay what you want. It's amazing. Go check it out. I haven't had a chance to listen through all of it yet because, well, it came out yesterday as of recording and things have been been busy. But I've got three songs this week that I want to feature. And I'm going to start off with Replacers, Never Die.
is one of the songs on the Boys at Dawn album. And this is classic replacer style. It's just super smooth on everything. The vocals, the instrumentals. It's just really nice, light, smooth song. And it's it's a song about encouragement. It, it kind of harkens back to, to Replacer's Roots, too. I really like it. Hmm. Um, it's got some nice low-end piano throughout it. There's a good voice. And it's got a yeah, kind of mellow sound. Which is very much mm. <laughs> so, the style. It's pretty good. The next one I have is not from the Ponies of Dawn album. This is Undreamed Panic's Grogar the Creator, featuring Prince Whatever. Industrial metal and dubstep. Quite the interesting mix, but I think it worked really well. It's it is a really heavy and hard hitting song. It reminds me a bit the whole industrial thing of like do like twenty sixteen Doom game, the music from there, or like if you've listened to the soundtrack for Descent Two, old game, that industrial metal, but mixing it with the dubstep was a really Really good touch, and I, I think mm-hmm. it worked really, really well. Yeah, yeah, like, very harsh sound. <laughs> very. Uh, there's, a, I kind of caught, caught a more of a like that mid mid late two thousands like very angry music style, like um, that sort of thing. You get the very angry style of music from that era, combined with the wubby dubby there. Yeah, combined with the wubby dubby. Yeah, so it's kind of that a very interesting sound in general just because of that. So it's like huh, Stein. a blending of uh, genres. I love it when you take, when people take different genres that are like usually never seen together and blend them in, in, together in a way that really works. Because yeah. I've, I've heard a lot of people blending genres where it just doesn't work, but this one did. And the last one I have for this week to feature is... Back to Ponies at Dawn, Skunked Sky High. This one is very different than the other two. It's very airy. It's kind of a sound with a really cool like 8-bit kind of thing in the beginning. It, it reminds me a bit of Sky Sanctuary from Sonic 3. It has the same sort of feeling, especially with the the 8-bit sound effects and stuff. It also includes some dubstepy elements as well, but very different than the last one. And it does it in a way that isn't like super obnoxious like dubstep can sometimes be. Mm-hmm. It, it, it doesn't break the style or flow of the song either which again dubstep sometimes does where it's like we're going to do one thing then switch to dubstep then hard switch back it doesn't do that it blends it really well together so i i really like this one check it out yeah i think you said there's kind of the date bit chip tune type thing in the beginning in particular <laughs> um you said sonic and yeah there has that there but it's kind of the weird fusion of sonic and the old top gear snes games as well there, there I, are some bits of that very so much sound like the old top gear soundtrack yeah i haven't really listened to the old top gear soundtrack so <laughs> i didn't have an nes as a kid yeah. i had a genesis and i played sonic so yeah, i yeah, do that one it's got a weird fusion of those two things there going on um yeah, so it's also got a very big and open feeling to the so- the sound of uh, the music music as well. Yep, which is the point. It's yeah. sky high, and it's <laughs> based high. on the theme of the sky movie fall. about the superheroes. <laughs> the whole idea of flying and, and the whole, I believe, as the description was, the whole flying through the sky and, and coming up and down as you go up and down at altitude all the way to the landing is right. how the whole, whole song flows. So really well done. 
So that's it for the music. And there's no fanfic stuff this week. Um, stuff, you know, I just couldn't find anything. Plus, the last few days, I was just kind of busy. <laughs> so I didn't have time to really read any. Uh, so there's no, and there was no updates no either. So there's that. Alas. Alas, indeed. Uh, we're done with this episode. I hope you enjoyed it. If you did, you can check out past and future episodes at pony411.libsyn.com. Again, that's spelled L-I-B-S-Y-N. All the episodes are there, along with links to all the things I'm about to talk about over the next few minutes. You can find us on youtube.com slash pony411. Like, comment, subscribe there if you want. Uh, that's the video version, of course. We're also on Stitcher. You can find us there. Search for Pony411. You can also fi- search for us on Google Play, iTunes, all that, those things. Uh, uh, Google Play is play.google.com slash music. Uh, you can find us. Yep, search for us there. Uh, subscribe. All that stuff if you want. And we're also on PonyvilleLive.com. It's the YouTube version, but we're there along with other shows and radio stations. And one of those radio stations is Ponyville FM, where we are there every Tuesday night, 6 p.m. Pacific, 9 p.m. Eastern. If you want to check us out there and also check out some live DJs and music and whatnot as well. And if you want to contact us, you can do so. Pony411podcast at gmail.com. Questions, comments, criticisms, uh, what do you think about the new episode and whatnot. And the season overall so far, if you want, whatever. Or just, you got a news tip? Sure, why not? You can also like us on Facebook. Facebook.com slash Pony411. The new uh, new episodes should pop up there as we go. And you can, all that stuff. Other than that, we don't really use it outside of that because, well, I don't like Facebook for a lot of reasons. Yeah. <laughs> and just kind of, this is kind of an out of necessity, if anything. And we're also on Twitter, at Pony411. That's where we usually say things. Some nonsense. Sometimes about moods. Because sometimes you find the right mood. Yep. And so that that's our uh, that's our social media thing. If you want to find our personal Twitters, I'm at Nemesis Prime One. He's at Alcatraz the Seven Seven T and an underscore at the end. I've been tweeting about well random nonsense. Uh, lots of reviews have been popping up because I finally got a bunch done and edited and ready to go. There's still gonna be more on my channel <laughs> over the next week. Uh, I saw a Viper, <laughs> a Dodge Viper. Oh yeah, yep. Cars. I, yeah, tweeted nonsense about uh, Sam Max weird nonsense there. A uh, bunch of stuff. That's it. That's all, folks. Yep. Join us next week. We'll be talking about, I believe, Common Ground, uh, the Cool Pants episode. Oh boy. Yeah, Rainbow Dash and Cool Pants. Fun. Yep. So until then. Please, pony responsibly. See ya. Goodbye.